Hello everyone and thank you for coming. I'm going to talk about weighted empirical risk minimization, uh, which is a joint work with Martin Ashard, Stéphane Clemenceau and Charles Thillet. In this work, uh, we consider prorating instances of the training distribution so that we can create unbiased estimator of the testing distribution in a case where the train and test distribution do not match. So let's get started. I'm going to talk first about some motivating examples. So sometimes training data that doesn't match uh, testing data, so we don't, the distribution are different. We call that problem distributional shift. And for example, uh, Jaroslav Gana in his paper from 2015, he was generating some numbers to classify street view house number numbers. So it's a street view house number data set. So you have these real images uh, that were taken on the street on the right that are very different in nature uh, from the images that you see on the left that are some uh, numbers in different fonts. So, of course, Jaroslav Gana, he was generating images on uh, different backgrounds. He was not generating these kind of very plain images that you see on the left, but it's still very different in nature from real images. On the other hand, uh, the distribution shift that you can observe can be a bit different, uh, for example, for uh, this face data set. So, on the left, you have a face data set that is called racial faces, Russell Faces is a face data set that contains an equal amount of the different ethnicities that you can find in the world. So it's a, a very high level view. There are not that many, there are more ethnicities than four, but it's a, it's a simplified view. And on the right, you have the label faces in the world data set that is famous for not being that evenly uh, distributed on the different nationalities or ethnicities that you can observe in the world. So here, you don't have that much of a difference in nature between the two uh, phase data sets, but you have a difference in distribution on the ethnicities. So we're going to see how these subtleties can be encoded in a probabilistic uh, framework. So let's start with the probabilistic framework right now. So in a probabilistic setting, you have some distribution over some input space. So this input space we call it Z and the distribution we call it P that we define on some probability space. Uh, the input space Z uh, in binary classification is just some features and the associated class, so minus one or plus one. And from this distribution, you're going to derive an ID sample that we call DN of N observation of the probability distribution P. Okay? From these instances, you can define an empirical distribution that is at PN, P at PN. Uh, that we define with the Dirac distribution, so that you will see defined here, and that check whether uh, the element Z is in the set A. So on the right, you see uh, a concrete example of this probabilistic setting, where uh, you have the distribution of the negative, the distribution of the positives, okay, and you can have an empirical distribution that you see on the bottom, where you have some negative and positive instances. In learning problem, you try to find the ground truth, so where to separate the instances, for example, uh, using this empirical distribution instead of this uh, more informative uh, full distribution. So the usual setting of uh, statistical learning is empirical risk minimization. So try to minimize the empirical risk and see how it relates to the real risk. risk. So this uh, real risk is defined as such. So it's the expectation of a loss function of, with a parameter theta. So you're going to try and minimize the risk on this parameter theta and the input random variable z. So in empirical risk minimization, you approximate this quantity with the sample dn. So you derive this estimator at hat r of p of theta. And you can guarantee the performance of minimizer of the, of the of equation two with uh, usual concentration inequalities. So you can guarantee its performance with respect to equation one. So the real risk are p of theta. But uh, these uh, usual results they don't hold when the training and the test distribution differ. So when you have a training distribution that we call p prime and a testing distribution that we call p. So in our work, uh, we consider a general probabilistic setting for problems where the train and the test distribution are different. We propose concrete, concrete techniques uh, for several problems. So the first problem is learning with different class or strata probabilities. Uh, 
The second, pro the second problem is PU learning. So PU learning is positive and labeled PU uh, learning, positive and labeled learning. So you learn with a, a sample of positive instances and a sample of unlabeled instances. Uh, this setting is often observed when uh, labeling data is expensive. Another problem that we tackle is uh, predicting with sensor sample. In this context, you, in all of these problems, we consider that we have some auxiliary, auxiliary information on the relationship between the training and the testing datasets. And we're going to see what is the nature of that auxiliary trans information uh, in the next slide. Finally, uh, we propose some illustrative uh, experiments of the effectiveness of the rating, the rating scheme uh, with the ImageNet dataset. So let's talk about the, the rating scheme. So you have this sample now, the n prime, that is different from the testing distribution p, okay? And uh, you have a, a weight vector p, uh, w, sorry. You can define the weight and empirical risk as such. So it's one over n, the sum of the w i l theta z i. So it's the weighted sample. It's z i prime here. Sorry. And uh, you can define an empirical weighted distribution using this uh, weight vector w. Under an assumption, so the assumption that you see here, p is absolutely continuous with respect to p prime. This is this notation on the left. Uh, p is absolutely continuous with respect to p prime. It means that the domain of uh, p prime, so the all of the points in the infinite space where the probability is non-zero. Uh, is larger than the domain of P. So it contains uh, the domain of P. Okay? So this assumption, it assures that the phi function that you define here, the likelihood function, so dp over dp prime, is not going to be equal to infinity. So this is why this assumption is here. In this, under this assumption, when you consider uh, the weights W star that are equal to uh, phi of zi z i prime, then you can derive an unbiased estimator of the true risk Rp of theta using uh, this weight vector w star. So it's a, it's a very interesting fact because it means that if you weight uh, intelligently the instances of the training data set, even though it is not distributed like the test data set, then you can obtain an unbiased estimator of the test performance. So we uh, derive an expression for the minimizer of this weighted empirical risk with optimal weights. And we can guarantee the performance of that uh, empirical minimizer of the weighted empirical risk. So we introduce two assumptions. So the loss is bounded, which is the standard assumption in, in uh, statistical learning. And then we introduce another assumption that is that the function phi is bounded, which is more, uh, this is weirder, it's not that's usual an, uh, an assumption. And with large probability, we know that the expected risk of, our, of the minimizer of the weighted empirical risk is close to the optimal parameter for the, uh, the test risk with uh, distance 1 over square root of n, where n is the number of observations. This is not because the Rodmar average that we see here, the Rn uh, prime of f, here, uh, it's the Rodmacher average, as I said, and it's equal to 1 over square root of n whenever the proposal um, parameter space satisfies some assumptions, some complexity assumptions. But there are two problems with this result, is that we don't know the function phi, which is a function over the input space, and since we don't know it, we cannot reweight the instances. So we cannot use directly this idea to uh, derive good estimators of the test risk. Also, if the quantity m is very large, then the bound is not that informative, it's not that interesting. So let's talk about some practical cases where we can solve these problems, these practical problems. So first, when we have a different proportion of target classes, we can do something. So if we introduce the proportion of each of the classes for the train and testing distribution, so we have pk prime and pk, pk prime in pk, then we know that the likelihood function is, is only a function of uh, the pk and the pk prime. 
Okay, so even though phi is a function over the whole input space z, we can summarize it with a few parameters, which is very interesting, uh, because we can first estimate the pk prime from the data, okay, because we know the proportion of uh, each class that we observed in the, in the training data, and then uh, we can assume, so this is the auxiliary information that we assume to be known, that the pk, the proportion of this class, is known. And then we can show under the assumption that the pk prime are away from zero, that we obtain the usual learning rates, one over square root of n. But when I presented this, uh, this reweighting instances for classes, this reweighting idea for classes, I did not really use the expression of the loss function. So maybe I can use it, even though it's not the target classes the, or the classifying classes or something like this, when it's something else that we call a strata. So we have a stratified uh, distribution with different, uh, different uh, strata. For example, here you have the nationalities of the, of the, of the people in the phase data set, and you can reweight your instances with this uh, strata information. So on the uh, upper figure, you see that uh, if I were to observe the same identities between the two classes, I could reweight uh, with the identities information, but it's a very complicated information to have, and uh, it's a very uh, fine-grained reweighting. It's not obvious that I will know the proportion of uh, the observation that corresponds to an identity the testing data set. However, I can in a lot of situations, I can know the nationalities that I'm going to have in the test dataset, and I can know the nationalities that I have in the training dataset. So this strata rating scheme is very interesting in a lot of uh, applications. So other problems that I can tackle uh, with this rating scheme is positive and label learning, or learning from sense of data. Since I don't have that much time, I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but you can see in the paper uh, where, how to deal with these problems. So let's talk a bit about the experimental evaluation in the remaining time. So the dataset, we worked with the dataset ImageNet that is based on the OneNet dataset. So the OneNet dataset, it's a hierarchical database of uh, English non nouns. And we used the ImageNet dataset with high-level synset as strata. For example, here, high-level synsets, it will be uh, a vehicle, and we have the class of vehicle, and we consider that we know the proportion of vehicles in the training, and there are the difference, uh, different proportion of vehicle in the testing data, and we are going to reweight so that we can have a non-biased estimator of the test distribution. Since uh, the train and test split of ImageNet have the same strata distribution, we induced uh, some bias by removing the data. So here I detail how to uh, imbalance the train uh, against the testing distribution, but I'm not going to go into much detail here. And I'm going to talk a bit about the, res the results. So we optimize for a stock microcentropy for classification of the lower level synsets, so the the, the synset that are uh, in the imaginary data set. And we see that on the top five er error that you see on the right, uh, you have a better performance when you reweight uh, with the strata information. And you have the same performance at the, with the class information because of our reweighting, the, our imbalance uh, scheme. So we we change the data to induce some in some uh, strata imbalance, which is why uh, the gray and the green line are on the same um, are the same here. Whereas if you don't reweight the instances, you obtain this performance in blue, so it's much worse. And on the x-axis, you have the number of iterations. I'm sorry, I have to go a bit quickly because I'm running out of time. So to conclude, uh, there are a few limitations to our work. So the first limitation is this hypothesis that the domain of P is included in the domain of P prime. So it's relaxed in that work from uh, Laforgue and Clemenson. And there are some work that are going to account uh, for the situations where the domains are different uh, using geometric interp interpretation. For example, in this work that leverages uh, optimal transform, transport to induce a geometric interpretation of the input space. Also, another limitation is the limited nature of the auxiliary information. So for example, in this work by Sugiyama, you consider a small sample of the target data set, so you have a, a different type of auxiliary information. And in future work, we are going to talk learning with a small data set that has the test distribution. So we're going to try 
and see what we can do in a setting that is closer to that of, Fugi, uh, of Sugiyama. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I had to hurry uh, a bit in the end of the presentation. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll leave you with the references.